Hey everybody, thanks for your interest in the Battlefield game on Hill Air Force Base, July 14th. I'd like to thank you all for your support in the wound with the Wounded Warrior Project. I'd also like to thank our sponsors, Tactical Airsoft Supply, Airsoft Megastore, bringing airsoft to the masses, Weapon Blender, Weaponize Your Weekend, and of course, Airsplat.com. This game will be held on Hill Air Force Base, so all of the rules of Hill Air Force Base applied. You must have security background check to be able to get on base. To get this done, you need to either contact myself or Thor with your driver license and full name. If you're under 16 or do not have a driver license, then your parents need to drop you off and I need their information. The rules of being on base also include you must wear your seatbelts at all time, no cell phones while driving, no speeding, and just like at all of our events, no pyro guys. It's way too dry out here to be messing around with flames of any sort. No smoke grenades, nothing. We don't want to cause a bad name to airsoft. We just want to have a good time out there. I'm going to read our rules of engagement so everybody's clear on that. The rules of engagement for uh, any 1-9 game. The rules are designed to enhance gameplay and are subject to change in order to increase game smoothness and fun for everyone. Just as everything in Airsoft, they rely heavily on the presumption of integrity. It is integral that all players ensure honesty in themselves and their teammates. We follow the RIS code established by BOE, respect, integrity, and safety at all times. We have put rules in place that will accomplish a balance of safety and playability. Therefore, the following restrictions will be put into effect. Anyone under the age of 14 must have a guardian with them to be on the field. All players under 16 must wear external face masks to protect themselves. This is the setup I wear while I'm in battle to protect my face. I don't want these teeth getting shot out. So, safety glasses on at all times. Our minimum engagements go up to 450 at 30 feet, so it can get pretty brutal out there, guys. We don't want anybody getting hurt. To get a kill, you must be hit with a BB or knifed. If you're hit, you must yell out, cover your mouth, pull out your dead rag, and raise your hand in the air and move towards respawn. The Battlefield game requires a dead rag, which, if you do not have one, we will provide for you. Indirect ricochets off buildings, walls, or other structures do not count. However, shots through the bushes, bank shots, floaters, friendly fire, gear, weapon hits, all count. If you do not call out when you are hit, you are cheating. I'm going to expand on the ricochet. There's connexes there. Those things, if you get shot from behind, if it shoots, bounces off, and hits you in the back, you're not dead. However, if a bullet comes through and right at you and maybe hits something and then bounces into you, but it's coming right at you, then you're definitely dead. Okay? Ricochets do count with grenades. Grenades are classified as the thunder bees when you put BBs inside of them, or like a tornado grenade, or the 203s, okay? Ricochets off grenades do count. There are no surrenders at 1-9 events. To be killed, you have to shoot or knife your opponent. Rules of engagement are as follows. Sniper class, shooting 451 to 620 FPS, chronoed with a 2-0 BB, has a minimum engagement of 100 feet. Main battle rifle, support class, and assault class all have, at full auto, 321 to 450 FPS, chronoed with a .20 BB, 30-foot minimum engagement. The 30-foot minimum engagement also applies to RPGs, Nerf darts, footballs, tennis balls, basically anything other than a 6 or 8 millimeter BB. SMG, pistol, shotgun, 203 grenade, 203 grenade launcher, shooting 6 millimeter BBs with an FPS of 1 to 
320 FPS, chronoed with a .20 gram BB, has a 5 foot minimum engagement. So what that means is if my 203 is shooting BBs, I have a 5 foot engagement with a short shell. If I have a long shell, it's 30 feet. If, I have a, if I'm using my 203 to launch a dart or a tennis ball, 30 feet, okay? If you have a gas shotgun that shoots over 320 FPS, 30 feet. Any weapons or pistols, CO2 pistols that shoot over 320 are also 30 feet or whatever their FPS deems them to be, okay? Grenades. Kills may be obtained with grenades in two ways, concussion and shrapnel. Sound grenades that contain no BBs have a line of sight kill radius of 15 feet. If the grenade has a direct path to your body and is within 15 feet when it explodes, you are dead. BB ejecting grenades can only claim life if a BB from the grenade strikes a player, no matter the distance. Sound plus BB grenades are a combination of the two individual types. That's when you put BBs inside of a Thunder Bee. So in that case, you'd have ricocheting BBs from a grenade count as a kill. Do not throw grenades directly at other players to hit them or hurt them. RPG class is anything launching a projectile other than a 6 or 8 millimeter BB. Self-constructed weapons need to be approved by Thor to be used, and of course they're use at your own risk. If something blows up on you, don't come crying to me about it. If you're using a CO2 container to charge them, max pressure of 130 PSI will be allowed to launch your projectile. 30 foot engagement on RPGs. If an RPG hits the ground, it has a 15 foot line of sight kill radius of all personnel. Okay guys, that's the rules on that. At 1-9 games, we like to leave our iPro on at all times, even in the safety briefing at lunchtime. Just leave them on, be safe. You never know what somebody else is doing. Hey guys, I'm going to introduce you to the Battlefield flag system right now. It consists of a few different parts. So come in over here, and I'll show you what we got. Down here at the bottom, the flags have a lower and an upper eyelet hole. The lower hole hangs the bag, that's all it does. The bag contains the flags for each team. In this case, Chinese and American, okay? This ringlet controls the pulley system for the flag. Every flag will start out in a neutral position like this is with no flag on it at the beginning of the game. To change out the flag to your team's flag, you come up to it, unhook it here, let that hang down, and then you have to bring the new connectors down. In this case, we're going to attach the Chinese flag first. Flags have to be oriented in the proper position for a point to become a respawn point. Once the flag's been attached, raise it to the top. The loop will be back down at the bottom again. You have to click it in. Once it's been locked into place, it's now a respawn point for your team. To change the flag out from the other team, simply come up to it with the flag already attached, unhook, bring that team's flag down, remove their flag, Place it back into the bag, pull your team's flag out, attach, and raise. These aren't respawn points for your team until your team's flag is raised to the top. And this is locked back in. Only at that point can your team use that as a respawn. Okay? So I've just showed you guys how to capture a flag and change out the flag system on it. Now let's talk about the respawn rules and how to actually capture it and whatnot. So every border is going to have a painted pink line around it, generally about 30 to 50 feet out from the flag. In this case, we're going to use the border of my yard as the, the border that normally would be painted pink. There's two flags in this system. 
the primary orange flag located at the border of the pink contestable zone. The secondary respawn flag. It's called the primary flag because you have to touch it first, secondary because you touch it second. So let's say that I've been hit and I have my dead rag out because I'm dead. First thing I would do is I'd walk over to the primary respawn flag, orange flag, touch it, and then come to the secondary respawn flag. I have to put my dead rag away, signifying that I'm no longer dead, then touch the flag, and I'm back in the action. Okay? I've tried a lot of different combinations, timing, whatever, but the bottom line is, if you get shot and you want to run to that flag and then run to that flag and get back in the action, great. What I'm going to do, I'm lazy. I'm going to walk to both of them because I'm lazy. But that's how you get back in the fight when you've been killed. Okay? First flag touch, second flag. Back in the game. Now you want to know, okay, I'm attacking these guys and they're responding like crazy. How do we take their flag? Now remember I mentioned that every flag is surrounded by a contestable zone marked in pink. In this case, once again, we're going to use the border of my yard as that zone. So, if I'm coming in and trying to capture this flag, as soon as I have crossed that line, that flag can no longer be used as a respawn point. Okay? So, let's give a couple examples. There's a bunch of people like in the trees or wherever and they're shooting at me, I'm shooting at them and I cross that line and I kill a couple of them. They can't respawn there. They can hang out and watch for a minute and see if I get killed and I'm not inside the zone anymore. If that's the case, I get killed, the zone is now clear, then they can respawn. Touch the first flag, touch the second flag, they're back in. If the flag position gets overran with people inside it, and they can change out the flag, then it's no longer a contest, and nobody from the other team is within there, then it, the flag has changed hands. Okay, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments section, and I'll be sure to clarify even more. I don't know how to make it much clearer than that. The orange zone is the contestable zone, pink zone, whatever you want to call it. And once you're within that, it cannot be used as a respawn point anymore. Okay? Thanks for watching, guys. We're going to go over the map and a couple of things on that, and I'll see you in a second. I wanted to clarify a couple of things on the flag changing stuff. So I'm going to give you an example. Let's say that I've got the enemy's flag halfway down, and I get shot while I'm right there at the flag. I just leave it right where it's at. They cannot use it as a respawn point until they raise the flag all the way back up and lock it back into position. Okay, I don't want any confusion on that. Also, Battlefield games are uniform specific, so if you want to be on the same team as your friends, you better wear the same uniform as them, otherwise you might get put on different teams, okay? Easiest way to split up teams is based on uniform. All right, so we're going to go over the rally point for this event right now. This is a map here. You can see Hill Air Force Base flight line. This is I-15, the 700 South exit, the Clearfield exit, okay? Get off the freeway. Head east, turns into 3000 north. If you go too far, it turns into Highway 193. It's all the same one road. This is the south gate right here. So let's zoom in on that. So this would be where the south gate entrance is. This is a pizza hut right here. And this section is a park and ride. So right here at this intersection of 3000 North or 700 South or 193, it's all the same road, is this Pizza Hut. This is the where you guys are going to meet up with Thor. Thor will be there at like noon. Okay, so the sooner you get there, the sooner he'll check you in to where you can meet me at the field. So what you're going to do is you're going to drive in after you've checked in with him. Drive in to me to meet me for Chrono. You're going to come in at the gate, take your first right, then another right, 
you're going to follow this street all the way around. For most of it, the speed limit is 40. Remember not to speed. Bring you right along the flat line here, along with the golf course. And then when you get to this intersection right here, you want to take a right and then another right. Parking is going to be along this area here. I'm going to be right here with the chrono station set up, ready to go. This is the field. So let's jump to the field map so we can see what's going on. Hopefully you guys recognize this from the website. Hopefully you've already checked it out a little bit. So my TV screen's cutting off a tiny bit. You, not a big deal. Okay, chrono safety briefing is all going to be done right here where I showed you parking over here. Keep your parking on this side so your vehicles don't get shot at. Okay, here are the, it says Russian, but it's Chinese team, same diff, right? Chinese team is going to start over there. American team will start here. After we do the safety briefing, we'll break up teams. You guys will go to your specific team's starting points. This this road here is paved asphalt. It's out of bounds to players, so do not walk on the road. If you walk on the road and you're not walking to or from a troop transport, you're dead. You have to go respond. Okay? So that's what this orange line signifies. The asphalt road is your boundary if you are an operator not going to or from a vehicle. So. Each team is going to be allowed to have unlimited troop transports with up to three vehicles at a time. So, for example, let's say I want to use my truck to be a troop transport. Because it's Hill Air Force Base, everybody in my truck that I transport is going to have a seatbelt on at all times. Right, guys? Okay. I do not want my vehicle to be shot at, so I'm going to leave it on the road on the purple line. The solid purple line is where I can drive my truck. So if I'm on this team, I'm going to load up troops wherever, drive them down, drop them off wherever I want. When a troop gets dropped off, he has to walk immediately off the road to the field. Now, before he can get shot, he has to be, once he hits the dirt, he's got 10 feet before he can get shot at. Okay. That's the only way we can give them a chance. Otherwise, the people stationed up all along here just blasted them, which you probably do anyway, but at least give them a chance. If I'm okay with my vehicle getting shot at, and right now we're only allowing them to be shot at with RPGs, which is like the Nerf darts or little tennis balls, not with BBs. So the only way we can get shot at is if you drive down off the main road. So the dashed line is going to be the spot where troop transports are allowed to drive. Now this road continues all the way down if you want to drive all the way down, whatever. This road gets a little hairy, a couple of steep spots. This you're not going to be able to drive past here. There's a bunch of bunkers and stuff set up, but if you wanted to, you can drive down into here to get close to that flag. So you're okay to drive on these if you are okay with getting your vehicle shot at. Okay. So we're going to basically be asking for volunteers from each team. If you're okay with transporting people back and forth, if you, let's say I'm on this side, I drive down here, drop off, I can get out, get in the action, get shot, get killed, drive back. Basically the idea is that if when you're on this road, you're a helicopter driving too high, too fast, whatever, to get shot down. But once you're off the road, onto these dotted line areas, you're then vulnerable to the RPG attacks. Okay. The X flags do not have a primary orange flag, as you can see. If you get killed and you're near that flag, just go to the X's and just touch that flag, you're right back in the action. Okay, so the flags are number one, two, three, four, and five. The first one is a prison. It's surrounded by a chain link fence at the opening here. We'll have the primary flag inside of it will be the secondary flag. It's not marked in pink because it's obviously the chain link fence. The second one down here, primary flag. The third one, we played a prelim preliminary game there a couple weeks ago. So it will have an interior pink one there maybe, but that's not what it's going to be. It's going to be the outside barrier of these connexes. This is probably one of the hardest areas to take, so we've 
expanded it quite a bit to make it uh, easier to capture the flag. Okay, this one in here is a like a drainage thing, so that kind of borders along that, and then down here is a opening that that flag will be at. So that's where all the flags are located. Like I said, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments page or reach me at 19alliance.com. I am Sinister. And one last thing I wanted to, well, a couple other things I wanted to go over. The game's scenarios are 90 minutes each, and then whatever side you start on, we'll just switch, and we'll do the next 90 minute scenario on the other side. The way to win is by how many flags you control at the end of that 90 minute period. There's really no reason to not get into the most epic airsoft battle you've ever been in in that 90 minutes. I wanted to thank you for your participation and I wanted to thank our sponsors again. You guys may have noticed that uh, we got the stuff from Air Splat. They wanted to say thanks for supporting the Wounded Warrior project as well. So they've hooked us up with these nice bags. Awesome Marpat. They took a picture of me when I was geared up and put it on the front of this vest for you guys with my gun on the side here. A couple water bottles. Remember to stay hydrated out there. And then everybody's getting a bag of BBs from these guys too. So. Also, I'm going to be posting up on our website a names list of everybody that we have that's good to go. If you do not see your name on that list, you better give me your info as soon as you can so that I can make sure you are on it. Thanks again for your support, and as always, see you at the fights.